Hey Rubik's friends, welcome to another STEM Sunday. Well, it's December, that means this is our last month of 2020, guys, we did it. Um, this STEM Sunday, I want to talk to you guys about algorithms. This is something we talk a lot about in Rubik's Cubes in general, but it actually applies to the larger STEM world. So I also wanna give you an update on what's going on with my personal science experiment with the Rubik's Cube in microgravity. It got pushed back again. I know, I know, I know, I'm so bummed. Um, it was supposed to be actually like right now this week, but it got pushed back because of COVID. So now we're looking at next year. So stay with me guys. Um, my times are going down. I can get pretty averagely about 20 seconds. So I'm really excited. And the journey has been really fun. So stay with me there and uh, more to come later. But let's talk about algorithms, right? Let's get into the STEM nerdy stuff. Okay, so algorithms, like I said, we talk about them all the time with Rubik's Cube, right? We know this algorithm, you know, I probably know about 50 algorithms, give or take. Uh, and then you get up to like the, the professionals who can go under 10 seconds. They know like hundreds of algorithms. And, and we say this, but we don't entirely know what exactly we're talking about, right? So let me break this down in terms of the broader picture of what an algorithm is. So an algorithm is a step-by-step -step instructions that gets you from an input A to an output B. So basically, you need to look at your surroundings, see what's going on, take in this information, take in this input A, and say, okay, I know that when I see whatever, I need to follow this specific step-by-step -step instructions to get to the output B that I want. So um, with that in mind, let's, let's dive into this a little bit more. The best example I have for this, like in everyday life, is cookies. Yeah, I know. I love cookies too. Um, but let's think about this. So we're going to take all of our ingredients. You know, we've got the butter, we've got the sugar, we've got the flour, we've got the baking soda and the chocolate chip. You can't forget the chocolate chips. You take all these, right? And you follow your step-by-step -step instructions, also known as a recipe. And the output B is cookies chocolate chip cookies, my favorite. Um, so that's kind of an example of what we're looking at here. Now let's dive into what this looks like in the STEM world a little bit. Um, for example, phones, phones have a lot of algorithms, for example, like, you know, I push these buttons, you know, and it'll call this person. That's kind of an algorithm. I'm doing these step by step. If, if your number is like five, five, nine, or five, 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 one, two, three, four, let's say my steps is to push five, push five, push five, push one, two, three, four, and my output is talking to the person I want. So that's another example of how we use algorithms in everyday life. Now the STEM world, the STEM world is chock full of algorithms. I think engineers and scientists and all those kind of um, left-sided people, left brain people, they really like algorithms because they love the step-by-step, -step, tell me what I need to do so I can get to where I want to be. Um, and that's, that's really common. So a lot of things that I, I do in engineering and things like that have a lot to do with algorithms. The best example I have of this is coding, like exactly what you think, like hackers, you know, um, software coding, uh, software engineers, all that stuff. They do a lot with algorithms. Okay, now one of the best examples I can think of algorithms for STEM is an if loop, typically used in coding. And specifically, I'm gonna use this in terms of a thermostat. Um, thermostats typically have feedback control. So this is gonna be a really good example. You guys are just gonna have to bear with me here, okay? So let's say I like to keep my lovely apartment here at 21 degrees Celsius. Now, that's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're saying 21 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna write an if loop that says, if, I take the temperature in my apartment and it's 70 degrees, no change. I, I like where I'm at, I'm very happy, right? Okay, else if I take the temperature and it is below 70 degrees, I'm gonna turn on the heat and get it back up to 70 degrees. And else, if it is above 70 degrees, I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning and get it back down to 70 degrees, right? That's a feedback loop. All of that is happening in your thermostat to keep you at the perfect temperature. And that is an algorithm. You are going through these step-by-steps of, if this, I'm gonna do this. If this, I'm gonna do this. And it's a really good example of taking in your environment, taking in these inputs, and doing step-by-step -step instructions on how to get the output you want. So, in a nutshell, that is what algorithms are. Now let's talk about them in terms of this lovely cube here. Okay, so, we all kind of, if, if you've spent time with a cube, we all kind of understand that you solve the Rubik's cube through algorithms. When it's all mixed up, you try to make things that you know, right? You try to get an input that you understand, 
and then you do a very specific specific set of of moves you know a move being you know down inverted down right whatever the specific moves are you do those in a certain way and that will give you the output you want and we have to go through many different iterations of this to finally get a solved cube but think about that that's exactly what we're doing when we're talking about cookies and coding that's exactly the same thing so let me dive into this a little bit more let's say i'm mixing up my cube i always hate this part because i have to solve the cube while i'm under pressure i feel like you guys are watching me i hope you guys aren't judging me um i'm taking it nice and slow um and i'm doing actually this is this part right here i'm getting to some really good algorithms but i'm not looking to show you guys these algorithms specifically so give me one more second i'm almost to where i wanted to be okay so this is a really good example i can look at this now and i say hmm look at um, i'm very close okay i've got this blue l little blue l here and i know i want an entire blue cross so this is my input i know what i want my output to be what are the specific steps i will take to get there so let's see ready Okay, look at that. And now I have a blue cross, see? Just like that. So doing these algorithms, these iterations at each step of the way is how you eventually solve a Rubik's Cube. Now, if you can solve a Rubik's Cube, first of all, good job, and that's probably why you're here. <laughs> but second of all, you probably think in a very analytical way where you can follow step-by-step -step instructions and understand how to get the output you want. This is really important in STEM because we use algorithms for optimization. This means better, faster, stronger, less expensive, whatever you want to optimize, which is basically a fancy word for making better, we can often figure out how to do that using algorithms. And really it is just figuring out what your inputs are, what your surroundings are around you, and how to use them using these step-by-step -step examples to get to where you want. So I think that is probably the best example of algorithms that I can give right now. It's a very conceptual subject so I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I try to explain it. Um, I hope you guys learned something cool about algorithms and remember if you guys have any questions about space, science, STEM, anything like that, you can always come to me. Now all I have to say is good job surviving 2020 guys. I'll see you guys next year. Bye!